Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. Check out the podcast below in the description. Do it right now. All right, John. Uh, with every day that passes, uh, it seems like uh, Robert Sala gets more and more sure of uh, an NFL job moving along with the Jets. Has the Lions almost feel like Sala's going to have some... It might be that he can choose jobs. Yeah, I mean, it. I saw Garofolo tweet that the Lions job is a little more up in the air than it felt like a little bit of a lock coming into the process, like he was going to go to the Lions. I, I just think... There are a ton of candidates out there. It does feel the last couple years, not a shortage of candidates, but it was just three or four guys. We had a large crew of the coordinators. Then you factor in all the college guys. Then you factor in the retreads, right? To me, it's not even just like Marvin Lewis. It's I see Leslie Frazier's in the mix. Obviously, a guy like Jim Caldwell is back in the mix. And I think there's a chance that some of those guys, if they get the chance to talk with an owner— they just have a resume of like, yeah, what do you, how can you lead the team? Well, when I was the head coach at these places, this is what I did. Like, there is something, when you're interviewing a coordinator, there's a huge projection there. When Marvin Lewis sits down, he's like, yeah, when, uh, you know, back when I worked for the Steelers and the Ravens, I don't know, as an assistant coach, and we went to Super Bowls and I won one. And then I became the head coach at, I don't know, the biggest joke organization in the league, and I led them in the playoffs. Yeah, six see how they're doing times. since I left? Yeah. I, I, I do think like Marvin Lewis sits in front of you. If you're a team, you're like, well, I just know this guy can get my the train back on the tracks for my organization. When Arthur Smith and, and Sala, when they do talk, they're just, this is what I plan on doing, right? right? It, it, it is a little different. If I'm Robert Sala, though, and it does feel like if he gets offered a job, he's gone, uh, clearly. I mean, most coaches are, but he has a pretty, I wouldn't say cushy gig, but he's got probably one of the better gigs assistant coaches in the league, right? He gets to run an organization where his coach is an offensive coach, but values defense. Look at the last couple of years in the first round, he drafts defensive linemen and Kyle's even got on a record. Like, yeah, they're harder to get. We need to do that. Like he does. Sometimes offensive coaches lean just the other way, you know, and that he's been very good to be for Robert Sala. Yeah. You just have the opportunity to where you go to the Lions, Like you probably have influence over who the general manager is. You go to the jets. Like, I don't know if you're quote unquote working for Joe Douglas. And I think a lot of general managers, when they go on record, they say this, but I do think they kind of mean this. Like I do kind of work for the head coach. My job is to be, to get him players. Cause if you don't think like that as a GM, you don't control the games. You don't control the practices. You need that guy. To me, you're a fucking moron. If you don't try to hire the best coach possible, even if that guy quote unquote might want a little more juice, it gives you the best chance to win. And then if you win, you become highly paid and a legend, right? No, no GMs are like, you know, I was a GM in the league for four years. And my coach was Freddie Kitchens and Tom Sula. Like, yeah, you moron, why'd you hire those guys? <laughs> Phil Savage all, all, told me the worst mistake he ever made when he was the GM of the Cleveland Browns was hiring Romeo Cornell. He just hired the wrong coach. And the moment you hire the wrong coach, it just ruins your general manager career. Because unlike coaches, not many guys – I mean, look at Thomas Dimitrov, all the success he had – he'll probably never become a GM again. Well, Robert Sala, if he goes to the Jets or the Lions and doesn't win, there's a chance he'll get another shot. Well, he'll get so, another defensive coordinator job at worst, and you're great at that. You might get another shot to be a head coach, depending on how it goes. Yeah. So, I I mean, I was told by people that had worked around Joe Douglas, the type of guy he would be looking for was a John Harbaugh type. And I do think Robert Sala has a different personality, but some similarities in just leadership in terms of, People just follow his lead. He just resonates with people. He resonates with young men. Uh, it does make some sense when you think about it. where's Joe Douglas from? The Ravens. What would Sala be like? He kind of feels like a little Raveny. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I think there's a couple. There, there's one. Another, here's another thing Robert really has going for him. I think the and by the way, I think the Lions is just. I think that organization's a disaster. I wouldn't go there. Yeah, but there's this balance, right? It's like okay, I can go to the Lions. I can. I might be able to have total control. I might be able to bring my GM with me and my GM answers to me in the way that Kyle Shanahan brought a GM with him. Right. So the, I, there's a little bit of this kind of attraction where you're playing with fire because it's Detroit, but because it's Detroit, you're getting more than another organization might give you. The chargers can't give you that either. Whereas with the jets, I think now that Robert Sell is having a second interview, part of this is with him. And like you said, he's in a really good position. 
part of it with him is evaluating whether or not Joe Douglas would be a good match. Because unlike in Detroit, Joe Douglas would have roster control. Joe Douglas would be his boss. And Salah doesn't have to just jump. It doesn't feel like at this moment. Like he has to jump at any offer that comes his way. He's got a little leverage to try to make his offer good, right? So that means I get to choose. You don't get to tell me any coaches I get to hire. You don't, or I need to hire. And he's got now. I would, I would say this. Which you shouldn't, you, as a GM, you shouldn't want to. No, like that but should I be just, his baby. Yeah. If you're him, I do think there, if you think Joe Douglas is great, if you sit down with Joe Douglas, you go, I think this guy's a good GM. If everything you hear about Joe Douglas is good and everything you've heard about Joe Douglas is good, a lot of what's been reported has been good, then it's not the worst thing in the world to not have total roster control if you trust the guy that does have total roster control. It does help you do your job. In an ideal world, somebody else has roster control than the head coach, and they can really trust that person and believe in that person. Don't you think – remember when Lewis told us, if you get so caught up on that, you're almost – screwed from the beginning a little it's a little bit i would say in like a marriage little prenup type talk yeah, like if you're right. just consumed it's, with that yeah, stuff sure. it is just you, you are broaching subjects that are probably need to be talked about and will inevitably be an issue potentially but if you're obsessed with that off the jump it's probably like i like this guy i believe in this guy i think we can work together let's let's rock and roll they're yeah. like i need to have the 90 man you know it's true I think there's something else that Robert Sala really Do you has think we going talk. I wonder if we talk about that more than actually young coaches do. Or maybe they've been hammered home now that it is a big deal. I don't know. I, I mean, to me, it... It is a consistent talking point. It comes up at the beginning, like for sure. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when we're all in the draft room, you do need to establish it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I think Robert Sala really has going for him... Two guys holding magnets like, I'm taking this guy! I'm taking guy you're like billy call in mac jones no jimmy call in kyle trask you know and the guy that ultimately makes the pick is just the kid who has the access to the red phone <laughs> yeah <laughs> take uh that's when the owner makes a pick um i think the other thing robert Sala really has going for him is in all likelihood he will know exactly who he wants to be as all he knows his offensive coordinator yeah. he's not picking his off and, and i know we talk about that a lot from the standpoint of the team, like, okay, you know who Robert Sala would be bringing with him, either LaFleur's brother or Mike McDaniel, and that makes you as a team feel better. But I'm saying from Robert's standpoint, knowing the guy that you're going to bring in gives you a better chance to succeed. And not every head coach has that. that you just don't always get that opportunity to, to know the guy. Sometimes it's an agent connection. Sometimes you might know the guy, but you haven't worked with him in three years. Robert Sala's got a really good thing going from that standpoint. Uh, that should make him very comfortable as well. Well, part of it is, and I've heard Kyle talk about this, you know, there is an unwritten rule about you can't just take everyone from the staff. He's like, when I, when I was in Atlanta and I became the head coach with the Niners, I had I talked with Dan Quinn about the guys that I wanted to bring. And part of, like, McDaniels and LaFleur, like, those guys were in Atlanta because I brought them there, right? Where if Robert Sala, who got the job in San Francisco by getting hired by Kyle, like those guys were, he's inheriting, like those guys were just on Kyle's staff. He's like, damn, these guys are pretty good, right? To me, there's a difference of when you get a coordinator job, if they let you bring two or three guys, like those are your guys. So if I'm a head coach, I do understand if that guy becomes a head coach, he gets to take it. If you come to my staff and I got five or six of my boys and you just want to take those guys, like that's, that's to me where it gets a little murky. And luckily, this is where I think it's just that Kyle and Robert have a really good relationship. Like they're on the same page. There aren't some curveballs like, damn, he tried to raid 17 guys. Like that used to happen to Belichick and there'd be knockdown drag outs. Well, why do you think that used to happen with Mangini and some of those guys stealing some of the guys? Cause you don't talk to Bill about things like that. It's just like unspoken. And then you're like, well, I want to, I'm going to bring these four guys. And the guy's yeah. like, please get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill's like, nope. <laughs> it's weird. People want to leave Belichick while they're having a bunch of success because it is really hard. You know, I don't think people necessarily want to leave Kyle, but you do want, there is part of leaving any place is always getting a raise and it's, it's human nature, yeah. you know? Yep. No, there's no doubt. Um, I think the Jets job's a good job. I mean, we've talked about it from Robert. That's the other thing from his standpoint is like, do you get to talk to Matt Stafford? Do you get to know whether or not Matt Stafford wants to stay? Cause I know with the Jets, I've got some options here. I can take a quarterback. Yeah. I can keep a quarterback. Hell, I can keep a quarterback and take a quarterback. Joe, what are you playing? Joe, what are you thinking? 
right? Joe Douglas, what are uh, you thinking? That's what I would say if I'm Robert Sala. Joe, what are you thinking? It, it, there's another element of Joe Douglas is an established GM. I, I mean, he's younger in the role. He's only been it for like a year and a half. But you don't have to worry about anything personnel. It, just in the sense of you get to work with him, but you don't yeah. have to like hire the GM, play a role. Like you just – you get to solely focus on – I, I do think as a first-time head – like it's one thing for Urban Meyer – who's in his mid fifties to like have all these grand plans. Right. I, I think for a first time coach who's in his late thirties, early forties, I do think it's easier to not have to fuck with it at all. It is a lot of extra, just like, you know, we're a tandem. I got to help him hire a staff. He's like, there's just a lot going on. Yep. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think that's what I'm saying. If you trust the guy, it's bet. It, it's hard to say it's better, but in, in many ways it is. You do your job. He does his job. The Jets franchise, just from a franchise standpoint, if both turn out to like, if you tell me that in a couple of years, one, whoever Robert Sala goes, they're both competing for the playoffs. I choose the Jets every day of the week. It's just a more important franchise, the league, New York, the history, the, you just get talked about more. It's yep. just like, you, you don't have a shot. The one thing, even though you're in the Patriot division and the Bills division, like if the Jets are good, they're they're leading talk shows. Yeah. You know, the thing with the lions, like you're just, and if they're you're never the pack, you're never the Packers. Yeah. And you're never the bears. It's true. 